Hello, grade five students. Mr. Waterman here with today's mathematics lesson on Monday, February 7th, 2022. I hope you all are doing safe and well at home. I hope your families are all right. And I hope you are taking a memo or printing off the notes that I have scanned and uploaded because you will need this for a quiz. I think I'm going to quiz you guys in a few weeks. For today, I'm going to go over the answers to last week's homework assignment, and then we're going to start the next topic today. That topic will run for a few weeks since we are still online, okay? So, sit back and hopefully you'll enjoy this lesson. I'll try to make it go as quickly as possible. Okay, hopefully my phone doesn't fall. If it falls, I'm just going to keep filming and I will probably laugh about it. Okay, so we have been talking about solid figures the last few weeks. Please remember that a face is a polygonal surface of a solid figure. Please remember that an edge is a line segment formed where two faces meet. Please remember that a vertex is a point where three or more edges meet. Please remember that a prism is a solid figure that has two parallel congruent bases that are polygons joined by rectangular faces. And finally, remember that a pyramid is a solid figure that has one base that is a polygon and triangular faces that share a vertex. I'll probably ask you about some of those on the quiz, okay? I'm going to lie this flat so I can go over the answers very easily. So we had to name each solid figure and we had to write the number of faces vertices and also edges okay number one we had a cylinder it has three faces zero vertices two edges number two we had a pentagonal pyramid with six faces six vertices and ten edges number three we had a rectangular prism with six faces, eight vertices, and 12 edges. We also have number four, a triangular pyramid with four faces, four vertices, and six edges. Number five, we had a cone with two faces, one vertis, vertex, and one edge. Number six, we had a square pyramid where we have five faces, five vertices, and eight edges, okay? For the word problem, it said, Alta traced the base of a solid figure, a square formed on her paper. What solid figures could she have traced? I said she could have traced a square pyramid or a cube. I drew a cube here, okay? That's it for the homework. I'm going to move this away slowly so I don't drop my phone off of my tablet, which is stacked on a lot of books. Don't you love studying online? I know I do. Okay. So I'm gonna bring out my notebook very slowly. I'm going to open my notebook to the TOC also known as the table of contents. In my notebook today, I am on page number 47. Page number 47, I'm going to slowly, oh sorry, not 47, I am on page 48. Make that correction there. And we are going to start with nets today. I talked to your grade five teachers just to see where you guys are in your book. And I was told that you just finished studying nets, which is what I'm going to get into with you. I want you to take a look at that. 
Let's take a look. I know you have a special name for this in Korean. The name that we call it in English, nets. It's going to make something. Do you think you know what it's going to make? Please listen as I go through the objective and the points. Nets. Objective. Identify the nets of solid figures. Learn about it. Cardboard boxes and other containers are made from nets. A net is a flat pattern that can be folded into a solid figure. As you can see, I have a flat pattern right here in my hand. Do we know what it's going to make yet? I think a lot of you have guessed. A solid figure can have more than one net. Soon, I will make this net. When making a net, you may need to add flaps in order to secure the net. However, the flaps are not part of a geometric net. I put a star next to that because that will most likely be a true or false question on your test. Okay, now, did you figure out what this net is going to make yet? Do you think it's going to make this? What do you think? Yes or no? Well, let's find out. Now, I'm going to move that over here in front of the mirror. And I'm going to take my net and I'm going to start to fold it, okay? You can see here that my net has flaps. You probably know why it has flaps, okay? So what I like to do is I like to try and just fold everything in first to make sure it's going to go together, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do that, there's one. I don't need that. And I'm gonna fold that in. Try to be patient with these because I haven't used them in a long, long time. Not since I was in grade three. Let's fold that in. And now I'm going to fold this flap back, fold this part in. Fold that down, tuck that in, fold this down, tuck this in, fold this down, and tuck this part. Ugh. Oh, it ripped. That's all right. There we go. Fix this, this side. There. Success. I have made it. Aside from the small rip here, the first time I did this, there were no accidents. But, you know, this is real life. 
things happen. Okay, so the net that I formed here made this cube. I'll move this one out of the way. And what do you think I'm going to use this small container for? When I used it, when I taught in grade three, I used it as a memory cube. And I used to have my students write a memory from grade one, from grade two, from grade three, and then they had different pictures on the side of their cube. So that was one use for it, okay? Now you saw how long that took me to make. I bet many of you kids could make the same net a lot faster than I could. If you were in school, I would give each of you one of these so you can practice with them. But the next best thing, you get to watch me. Okay, now that's pretty much it for the nets because I'm going to be doing this next week with you. But for today's activities, I have something a little bit different. And I'm going to show you the first activity, which is right here. And it's called Nifty Nets, okay? And basically, what I want you to do is to read it again. So a net is the flattened out three-dimensional shape. When you fold it up, it shows you what the three-dimensional shape would look like. The directions for this activity. It says, which three-dimensional shape will the net make? You're going to fill in the bubble of the answer that best fits the picture. Okay? So let's look at this first picture. Is it going to form a triangle, a cone, a pyramid, or none of the above? Well, I can look at this net and I can see that it has a square for the base and it has these triangles on the side. And I know that this is going to form a pyramid. So I am going to fill in C. You fill it all the way in like that, okay? You're going to do this for the other pictures on this page. Then, there's another activity that I have, just on three-dimensional shapes, just as a review. And it says, two-dimensional shapes have length and height. Three-dimensional shapes have length, height, and width. Below are some of the most common three-dimensional shapes. You need to draw a picture and label the correct two-dimensional shape that it makes. So let's go through the shapes. You have a sphere, a cone, a cylinder, a cube, a rectangular pyramid, a triangular prism, a cuboid or rectangular prism. Okay. You have cuboid rectangular prism here twice. Okay. You have a triangular pyramid and then you have a hexagonal prism. Okay. So I'm going to show you one example of how to do this. Okay. Let's look at the first one, at the sphere, okay? The correct two-dimensional shape that comes out of a sphere is a circle. 
So I've drawn a circle and I have labeled it. And that's what you are going to do for all of the shapes, okay? That's it for this activity. Nice and easy, okay? Next week, I have a lot more for you to do with nets. I'm going to give you an easy, easy time, okay? In the meantime, please review your notes and review these videos. You should be completing all of your work. Last week, out of 120 mathematics students, one student sent me her homework, okay? Make sure your name and date is at the top. Please be sure you've put your first name, last name, class, and student number as well. You can scan it and you can email it to me. I would greatly appreciate that. That's it for this activity. We will go over these answers next time in the next video. Take care. Stay safe and well, students. I hope to see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.